I've titled my message, Are You the One? Are You the One? And it's an interesting journey that I've been, as I've been going through this Bible stuff and reading and just doing my thing with it, with the Bible project on one side and it on the other and trying to get my head around it because I'm not a very smart person when it comes to study. I have to work really hard when it's, study, when it's that stuff. I have to actually really work hard. So I'm really, really pleased at the moment, the way that God is doing stuff through my life and speaking to me and allowing His Spirit to be uh, uh, alive in me the way it is. And, but the thing is this, no matter who you are, this is possible. All walking with the Lord is possible. But the Bible says, there's this story in the Bible of John the Baptist, if you know him. No, he didn't go to the Baptist church, probably how it got founded. But anyway, he was John the Baptist is what we call him. They probably just called him John. I don't know. Maybe they did call him the Baptist. But he is this guy and he's currently in prison. I want to pick the story up here. For publicly reproving or going crooked Herod for divorcing his first wife and unlawfully taking his sister-in-law, his brother's wife, as his, as his second wife. So he just took her. John said, you know, that's not the right thing because he knew the law. He knew the, the, what the law was. And Herod had just done And this. The, he's the, the Israel king who's done the wrong thing. He said, dude, you can't expect to be blessed for this. You've just done the wrong thing. So he didn't like that, so he put him in prison, locked him away. And it appears that right now, John sends his disciples to Jesus and he asks them this question because he's not quite now 100% sure that this Jesus is who he thought he was. Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 to 12, 1 to 7, sorry, says this. When Jesus had finished giving instructions to his 12 disciples, he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. Verse 2. Now when John, while in prison, heard of the works of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the expected one, or shall we look for someone else? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them and blessed is he who does not take offense at me. What an incredible thing to think that John the Baptist who stood in the waters of baptism with Jesus and heard the voice from heaven say, Behold my beloved son in whom... I am well pleased and has come to take away the sins of the world. He stood in the water while a dove descended upon him. His whole life, whole life was about preaching, the preparing the way of the master, preparing the way of the Lord Jesus Christ to come and rule his whole life. And here he is in prison right now, after all that, asking, are you the one? Or should I keep looking? Are you the one? Because think about it. These are the things that, that, that John would have been saying. He would have known passages off by heart like this. Isaiah 9, 6. For a child will be born to us. He would have been in the wilderness declaring, a child will be born to us. A son will be given, the prophet Isaiah said. And the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace peace on the thrones of David over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this he would have declared that with boldness and courage every day in the wilderness He would have said, behold, the prophet Jeremiah said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. And this is his name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. And he would have declared that day in, day out, day in, day out. And now he's in prison. Are you the one? Are you him? Or do I keep looking? Jesus sends back the message telling what you've seen and heard. 
John's asking, are you the Messiah? John, Jesus responds and answered him. He says, go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who does not make take an offense at me. I read that last bit this morning again and again. I go, Lord, what is the offense? And why would we be offended? There's so many people that get offended at God because it doesn't come through the way that he thinks we think he should. John the Baptist, Jesus, they said the Pharisees called his disciples gluttonous because they went about drinking and, and having a great time with Jesus. John the Baptist, on the other hand, his disciples weren't called that at all. The interesting thing about the whole journey is that these men, these men were sent to him and as they come out, he's going, don't be offended. He said, make sure, and that's the very last little bit of that thing. He says, and all this is going to happen, but don't be offended because it's probably not going to happen the way you think it will. Here's John the Baptist in prison now for speaking what was right, for doing the right thing. And now he's in prison wondering, is this all worth it? What is about to happen? I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get out of this. So God, Jesus, this better be right. This better be right. This better be the thing. But remember, there's people in this, in this chapter now and he's saying, are you the one? Are you, are you the one? There's people walking around the planet right now looking for the one. They're all in, getting involved in all sorts of religious and all sorts of experiences, spiritual and all that sort of thing. Why? Because they're asking the question, are you the one? Are you the one? Is your new age stuff, is that the new, are you the one that I should be listening to? And the deeper people go into it, into stuff and religions and things like that, you know, they find themselves being more and more bound. They come out with freedom and liberties, but the thing is, this is not that. It's man's freedoms and liberties. It's a spiritual freedom that the enemy wants to give because there's only one freedom that comes through Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the answer for the world today. He is the only unblemished lamb that can set free mankind from all their sin. There is none other. There is no other way to God except through Jesus Christ. So when John's asking, are you the one? Are you the one? It's more. It's more than just a question of, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I need to know, are you the one that can deliver and heal and cleanse and make whole those that are broken? Are you the one that's going to deliver Israel? Because what we thought the deliverance was going to be is not the deliverance that Jesus was sent to bring. They thought he was going to rule as a king and tear down all the, the, the enemies of Israel. But he didn't. He did something greater. He tore down the enemy of our soul and destroyed him. Having disarmed him publicly, the Bible says in Colossians. So two questions I have today. Have you forgotten in the darkness, in your trials, in your easy times, even in the easy times of your life, have you forgotten who Jesus is? Have you forgotten who he is? Jesus, or John of all people, would have known who Jesus was. He would have known exactly who Jesus was because he was declaring the way, as I said before. But what about us? What about us and our trials and our circumstances? Are we forgetting who Jesus is in the darkness of our life? Are we forgetting that whenever a trial comes our way, that with a great deliverer, you see, the enemy wants to get us focused on the problem when the problem isn't the problem. The answer is the answer to the problem, and the answer is Jesus. God, I don't know how you're going to deal with this, but only you can do it. Only you can help me keep my heart sweet. Only you can help me through this financial situation. Only you can help me through this cancer. Only you can give hope. Only you can be the one that delivers my health when I am not able. When I have done everything I know to do, when I've gone to doctors, taken pills, when I've done everything I know to do, God, I still need you to know that you are the one I depend upon. You are the one I trust in. You are the hope that I sing about. You are the Lord of my life. You are the King of kings and you are the one. So when I come into the wilderness, I go, God, are you the one? And I can answer resolutely in my heart. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one because it doesn't matter what comes my way. It doesn't matter what the world wants to say. It doesn't even matter today what the, the church wants to shout out across the airwaves of Facebook and YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and all those things. The problem that we know, that not, the, not the problem, the answer is still you. You are the answer. You are the hope of this world. Because, Lord, I know that because you have been my hope. 
You are my hope. You are the answer. You are the answer to my problem today. And God, no matter what a doctor says, no matter what my mind tells me, no matter what my feelings and my anxiety, you are still the Lord of my life. And I come to this place today and I answer this question. Are you the one? You sure are. You are the one. And the resoluteness that comes as we develop our relationship with Him. It doesn't come by developing your relationship with Him through other people. You cannot have a relationship with God the same way I have it. You have to have it your way. You have to have it the way He's designed you to have it with Him. And it's really different. There are some things that are the same, like spending time with Him. But your way to spend time is totally different from mine. Totally different. I'll guarantee it 100%. It's really different from mine. My way is really, 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 really different. And I love the way that God and I hang out. I love the way that he challenges me. I love the way that when I'm reading his word, I can't get away from it and go, God, but what? (laughs) They're like that bit there where it says, blessed is he who does not take offense at me. That stuck with me all week. And there I was trying to prepare a sermon for all of you and all the people online. But blessed is he who doesn't take offense at me. Because at the end of the day, I come back to this space and I go, because Jesus, you are the one. There is no other. The second question that I have today, as I said before, firstly, have you forgotten who Jesus is? It's easy in the hard times to forget Jesus. We follow the Jesus we follow has caused the blind to see. Remember that. He removed your blindness so that you could see him. He removed your lameness so that you could walk freely. He took away your dead flesh, cleansed the lepers. He took away the deadness of your flesh and replaced it with new life. He took away the deafness of your ears so that people, you know, there's people walking around this earth today everywhere who are hearing but not hearing. They're hearing but not hearing. Jesus has taken that away from me that I can hear. I can hear. And it says the dead are raised up. He took my deadness and created it into life. So I preached, I used the term zombies last week. They said the earth is full of zombies. They still are. Because what zombies do is they'd want to create you to be like them. If you've never watched a zombie movie, don't bother, don't, don't go and chase it up. But in a zombie movie, they will in hordes and they will attack the people until they don't kill them they just kill them so they're live and dead and they walk around looking like them you all know what a zombie looks like on the movies they don't walk like this which is interesting in the old days that's how they used to walk but then they convert everybody else to be like them and that's what the world wants to be with the church when the church is standing up in its right place with God and going are you the one yes you are yes you are Not the ones that are religious, not the ones that are going, you must do this to be saved and you must do that. No, the simpleness is what Rose said this morning was that one drop of blood was shed for my life and I say, Lord, I accept what you did. Forgive me of my sin. And so they walk around wanting us to be that way because it's not, they don't see, because they see the life and they want to suck it. But our job is to remain firm in him so that they receive the life. I always think to myself, I shouldn't refer to movies, but there's a movie that I watched. I'm not telling you the name of it or anything like that, but it is a zombie movie. My kids told me to watch it, so I did. Janine was cranky at me because she hates zombie movies. I want you to know that. She hates them. I love them, but I don't watch them because I know it offends her, so I would rather have her love than not. It's just a movie. It's just a movie. Others of you will be sitting here going, zombie movies are awesome. They rock. I know they do, but no. But there is a movie that I watched, and as I watched it, it just, was an, it just was a really cool, cool concept. As they, there was a, a young girl who fell in love with a zombie. Now, this is not a scriptural movie at all, but she fell in love. She was normal. He wasn't. But her love for him, he began to change. And he actually turns back into a human. He t- actually turns back. And what they realize, now this is all stupid in Hollywood, but... 
what they realized was that if we would just show them kindness, they'll actually turn back to normal. Sound familiar? And there was a group of them that were unredeemable, that you could not show them any love because they refused. And they became more aggressive and more violent. It's a really interesting concept of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I began to think, and as I look at people, my second question is this, is when people come to you or to Jesus or to the church with the same question, are you the one or will I look for another? What do they see? What do they experience? What is the, 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 the grace of the God that we serve to them? Because it's easy for us to just allow ourselves to be caught up in our own relationship with Jesus, in our own walk with him, in our own world, and go, well, they're all burning and they're all going to go to hell. You see, folks, the issue is this, is that we were them. We know better except that we, by the grace of God, heard and saw. But now it's our turn to walk in that same grace and mercy with one another, with the kindness of God, to reach out to people. The second question is when others come to ask the question of us, is this the Jesus, this Jesus you preach? Is he the one that can deliver me? Is he the one? You think about this for a minute. Is he the one? Is he the one? You talk about this Jesus. You talk about this God that can set people free. But all I hear is, is, is a damnation. All I hear is, is curses. All I hear, all I hear all the time is I'm not good enough. Is this Jesus that you talk about. I hear you talk about he's a loving God, he's a kind God and we got all these questions about what goes on in the world but see that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to fake if God's real, if God loves us and all that stuff and we look at all that but what I've began to realize in my life is that the more that I reach into the presence of God and the more that I let God's love consume me that the more I fall in love with the lost and the broken, the hurting so that when they meet me, they meet Jesus and when they meet the Jesus that's in me, their mel, their life Life just melts to the ground and they go, what must I do to be saved? When people come here to you, our church, will and asking the question, is this the one? Is this the one that can set me free? What will they experience? What will they see when they meet you? Will they meet people when they come here? Will they just see Darren, a 57-year-old tall, balding guy with a little bit of weight on him? Is that what they're going to see? Or when they come here, are they going to see the power and the presence of a mighty God that they've heard about and now they've tasted and they say, what must I do to be saved? Will they see musicians who just are good at playing instruments or will they see the presence of God? Will they see Jesus? It's not even the presence. It's just will they see Jesus? Will they see Him? Will they experience Him? When they look at those crosses every day for the next month, will they see Jesus or a bunch of white crosses? Will they see him? I want Jesus walking amongst those crosses, going, God, drawing them in, not to here to fill the seats, but to come and find Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer. Are you the one? Are you the one? Or should I keep going? Can you not hear the desperation in their voice? Are you the one? Are you? Are you the one? Are you the one that can if I come? Are you going to be able to help me? And our pride and our ego right now will go, well, we all know it's Jesus they've got to come to. You are Him. And if you keep pushing people away and going, you're not, you're, oh, you're just evil. No, they're not. They've got Jesus to come to. Oh, but you don't know what they've done. I know what they've done. So does He. And He's willing to sacrifice His life. Oh, I think of all the evil dictators and everything in the world that we deem as just wrong and all that sort of thing. You know, every one of those people would have the opportunity to meet Jesus. I'm not saying they did. You know, we were talking about this at work the other day about the, the white sheet people that wear white sheets over their head. I think we call them the KKK. I said, you know, those people do it all. They were talking about, you know, they're just so evil. I said, you're not wrong. I said, but they also use the Bible. 
because that's what religion does. The more I read the word, the more it breaks my heart because I begin to realize that there is a, 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 there's a washing of it that takes place in my life and I don't want to be hard to people. I don't want to be hard because people can harden you so much. Can they not? Can they not? People can harden you. I remember one of the last things my dad said to me when he, before he, not long before he passed away, he kept reminding me all the days of my life. He said, son, whatever you do, always keep your heart sweet. That sounds like such a simple task. But if you know, if you've been in humanity any longer than 20 years, you will know that that is not easy. It is not easy to allow the offenses of life to just walk over you and come and justify everything that's happened and justify I, this is wrong and I'm right. Imagine if Jesus said that. This room would be full of goats and pigeons and ducks and sheep right now. If Jesus had said that, you know what, I'm over you lot. Sick of what your Pharisees are up to, sick of your Sadducees, you know, blow you, I'm off. Wings come out and off he goes. But he didn't. Because he answered this question, are you the one? He said, yes, I am, because he answered the question in the garden and he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Nevertheless. And so the challenge for us today is I don't know what those crosses out there are going to do, whether anybody will come because of them or whether it draws people or not. I just believe in my heart it was something that God had been putting on my heart for the last six years to do and I found somebody that said, I'll have a crack at it for you. I don't know what it's going to do, but I keep reading this scripture time in and time out. When people come, people come, Jesus, will they see you? Will they love Jesus more because they've met us? When they walk out of these doors and they're visited for the first time, will they walk out, will they love Jesus more? Will they know more, a little bit more about this amazing Jesus that we serve instead of a religious concept of, of judgment and, and hardship and it's all everything you've got to give up. Oh, I've, I've given up stuff that I thought I could never give up. The things that I've, re, I've been not been able to, to, that I used to be able to do and thought to myself, I'll never, ever. Here's another thing that's come with reading the word, things that I never, ever thought I would be able to be free from. Things in my life that I'm attached to, like zombie movies, for example. That's just one area. But it's almost like he replaces the desire. It's like the desire goes, and I haven't done any praying for it. I haven't been in my room going, dear God, I'm so broken, I'm useless. <laughs> As I'm reading his word and allowing it to wash and just keep washing and keep washing and keep washing. And in my, as I'm in the pen and he's washing and he looks he goes, there's the gold I've been searching for. That's in all of you. He just keeps washing and the washing is a pain because it's that I just want to be this lump of dirt. But if I just allow the washing and if I allow that washing to take place and allow it to take me that when people come and they say, are you the one? And I can honestly go, I'm not, but I'll point you to who is. Why people look at leaders in the church and, and they think they're amazing and we put them in pedestals because some, most of them, if they're a really good leader, they will have paid the price for their relationship with him. But any person, that can, any person can find a relationship with God. Any person. you're bitter and hurt and twisted and everything's going wrong in your life, I ask today, would you surrender? Just simply say, I need to surrender. Maybe today you're sitting in this room and, and you're thinking, I don't know if I could ever be free from this. Would you just allow him? Just take a moment and allow him. Allow him that moment. 
Would you allow his Holy Spirit right now, who is in this room, each and every one of you, to take a moment in the silence like Shane talked about before. His presence is in this room right now. We don't even need the music. It's nice to have music. I love having music when we're doing it. But folks, his presence is here. Will you allow just that moment in your life right now to say, Lord, I really struggle with this or I find this easy or I find that hard or just have a little, catch, little chat in these next few moments before I close the meeting and answer in your heart. Ask that, let that question sing through your spirit right now. Are you the one? Can I stop here? There's someone in this room right now and that's a question. As I asked that question this morning, something just jumped in you. That's the spirit of God. He's just quickening something to you right now. And he's going, yeah, I'm, I am. This is what you're looking for. This is what you're looking for today. Maybe you're sitting in this room right now and the, the journey that you've been going on and there's, there's so many questions and whys and God, I've been so faithful. Like you can imagine John the Baptist, I declared every day I spoke every day about your goodness, about who was coming, the deliverer, and here I am in prison because I spoke the truth. You know, the really interesting thing about that was that Herod, it said that Herod enjoyed listening to him, even though it irked him. Because Herod knew the truth. He knew every day. He knew every day what the truth was because he knew it as a boy. Herod knew. He knew that he'd walked away from the one and led his nation away from the one. Here before you right now stands the one. And his name is Jesus. Will you allow him that moment? Behold the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Behold him today.